Hi there, it's Debbie Anderson and I'm here today to help you on your journey from healing from uh, narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships and I know that I was going to do a video um, about uh, healing te techniques um, and, and show you one of those however I'm still working on that so today we're going to talk about something else and um, that's about how narcissists use brainwashing tactics and um, this also applies in the globally in the world um, as in our personal relationships so let me ask you first if you could please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already leave me a comment a question I will get back to you a thumbs up it really if it resonates with you I really would appreciate that so if you found yourself to be a prisoner um, would you say it was a good experience would you lie around in your cell and uh, consider how lucky you are that you're in this uh, cell? Um, and if the cell door was open and there was no guard around, would you stay inside? Probably not. Of course you wouldn't. So we often find ourselves in abusive relationships and allow our abusive partners to imprison us. Um, of course, it takes some time to figure out that you're actually in a, an abusive relationship. But when your eyes open to this horrifying truth, um, why do we allow ourselves to continue to be abused? So abuse in a, in a narcissistic abuse in a relationship is a very covert uh, form of abuse. It's very deceptive. And unfortunately, it's hard to put your finger on what's wrong because it's very sneaky. It's very deceptive. Um, did you know that it uses this, that, that narcissists use the same psychological warfare that you might find in a military prison camp, for example? Guards at prisoner and prisoner of war, war camps um, know that physical compliance is very hard to maintain, so you have to use a lot of physical exertion, it's messy, and you need a lot of energy and strength, so they often choose an easier path, one where the prisoner only not only accepts but complies with every demand. So how is this done? It's done through emotional manipulation and abuse. It's you use uh, things like humiliation, uh, degradation, disrespect, punishment. It's meant to cause the person to question their every behavior and thought. And it includes very, doing very harmful things, threats of doing negative things, coercive tactics to cause a lot of emotional distress. And this manipulation is the same method the narcissists use, exactly. And we can see that in our world today. Um, what does this look like in the un to the unsuspecting person? So here are some of the common tactics that they use and what it looks like in real life. By no means it's not all the sinister tactics, but it's a, uh, uh, an example. Um, you is you're isolated from your family and friends. They deprive you, they deprive you of... Uh, being involved with uh, your family and, and this weakens your defenses and somehow um, they say things like, uh, they might start out by saying things like, um, well, do you have to go out? I get so lonely when you're not here. Or I wish you could spend more time at home. Or I don't get a good vibe around that friend of yours. Um, or your friend seems to dislike men, including me. So gradually these comments might turn to more nasty and sinister, like uh, your friends are really complete bitches and whores. You're a slut yourself, just like your friend, and everyone knows that you and your friends are losers. You know your friend so-and-so is in love with you, right? These aggressive statements usually have you think about what they have said and the result is you withdraw from your circle of friends or worse, you might begin to believe that there is some truth to them. The occasional rewards, the breadcrumbs that the narcissists give out um, gives the false appearance that they are pleased with you and provide the illusion of a normal relationship. And this tactic is used to provide positive motivation and continued compliance. And this tactic may come in the form of praise. You look lovely today. That dinner was nice because I was sitting beside you. I want to spend my life with you. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. Uh, let's go to that new restaurant you like so much that you mentioned yesterday. Later, it turns into things like, I really can't take any more of your crap. Or, no one but me knows uh, um, that I have to put up with everything you do. It's no wonder none of your relationships never work out. And the only reason anyone would want you is your income. And I can't 
listen to any more of your whining. Those of us subjected to emotional and narcissistic abuse don't realize this. The our abuser throws a uh, bone uh, in small amounts of kindness and, f and affection in between the chaos that's, uh, that's meant to be purposely there. For us, it creates a unhealthy attachment to the abuser. And this is called a trauma bond. And narcissists are very masters at this. So another tactic is silent treatment. And the silent treatment is used as a form of punishment. When you've attempted to establish a boundary, for example, the intended result of the silent treatment is to manage your expectations to less and less and less. And the narcissist gets away with more and more and more. And the message is, uh, you better comply or else. Um, this compliance can last for from a few days to several weeks. And the narcissist often, uh, they might even leave the home. During this time, they're typically grooming uh, maybe their new supply. The next tactic that they might use is humiliation. It's when the narcissist uses these uh, silence or their words or actions to belittle and threaten you. And the purpose is to intimidate and instill fear. And the goal is, of course, what? To control you. So it happens when you're alone and also when you're with others. A common phrase is used by narcissists early on uh, when they're doing this is, uh, I think we both need to go on a diet. Or how come you didn't take care of yourself like you used to? Or why don't you get your hair cut like your friend so-and-so? Um, have you ever thought about plastic surgery? Maybe to increase your breasts? Um, literally use more hurtful and obvious things like you're fat and I can't stand to look at you let alone have sex with you or I'm not attracted to you anymore I don't know if I ever was uh, or you can't get anything right can you and uh, I knew you weren't that smart or this one this was said to me you have a personality disorder or uh, even your mother didn't want you I should have listened to myself about you right from the start. The purpose of these harsh comments is to destroy your self-esteem and confidence. And it's a form of conditioning that usually results in you believing that you're what? Worthless. So another tactic is failing to meet emotional or other needs. Um, are you a stay-at-home mom? Does your partner supposed to try to convince you to stay at home and not work outside the house? And uh, of course, this wasn't the case with me because my abusive uh, narcissistic partner wanted my paycheck. He wanted me to work full time and he also wanted me to take care of the house and the children full time. And this maneuver, uh, though, that a lot of narcissists use with having you stay at home is they're in, you're entirely reliant on them. And um, like you need them for your essential things, your resources uh, are only limited to what they'll give you. So, you know, they'll pay for your cell phone if they even give you a phone, gas money, uh, internet, computer, everyday conveniences. So when do you consider leaving? Uh, narcissistic abuse robs a person of self-esteem and the ability to think logically and have confidence in yourself and you lose your identity. Um, and if your partner's words or actions caused any of the following feelings, uh, it is time to consider leaving. So if you have excessive dependence on them, if you've tolerated behavior that you've never imagined you would, if you're trying to survive day to day, unable to make an escape plan um, because you're so exhausted, any action you take is criticized uh, unless it's one of compliance with their defense or their desires, rather. You feel anxious and depressed most of the time you feel isolated and alone and you rarely see any of your family or friends. You constantly think about other things and ways uh, to say or do the right thing so your partner doesn't become upset and go off into a rage. You keep your partner's abuse a secret from your family and friends. Anything you do and say is met with anger and indifference. Your feelings and desires don't even seem to matter to your partner. There are times that you might feel suicidal. If you've tried uh, therapy and set boundaries but are still being abused, it's time to leave the relationship and seek help, for sure. Especially if you're feeling suicidal and that overwhelmed. 
So I attended a therapy uh, therapy with a few therapists with a narcissistic partner. How that ever doesn't work? Um, you can see my post about uh, not going to counseling with a, with a narcissist and why that is. So you're in a prison based on delusion that you need your abuser in your life. You need to break all ties as much as possible with them. Hire a lawyer, contact maybe domestic abuse shelters, uh, and start making plans for a new life. It's harder to do this when you have children with you. However, looking back at what happened to me and how I tried to co-parent, which is impossible with a narcissist, I realized just how wrong that was for both myself and my children. You can never co-parent, ever, ever co-parent with a narcissist. And if you were to look at this objectively, you could not, you could not live with a narcissist, let alone co-parent with them. When you were uh, with them, you couldn't co-parent co with them um, because they're of the uh, tactics that they use, the lying, manipulation, controlling. I wasted a lot of years trying to work with my malignant narcissist around parenting, and this was impossible, a torture. I finally realized it's never going to work. He took great pleasure in continuing the relationship as I was still his narcissistic supply, however. And only when I truly understood and discontinued all contact with him was I able to really focus on healing myself on a deeper level. So if you please have a look at some of the resources on my website here on the channel, um, free resources. I wrote an ebook about how to, six steps how to recover from narcissistic abuse. It'll help you and uh, help you get out of this situation, which um, is sheer hell. And um, it does talk in this book, ebook, that I, about how to get out and, you know, how to get support, um, things that I wasn't, uh, I couldn't find when I was in the situation. So if you have any questions um, and you would like uh, to leave me a comment, please do so. I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook. I've been through a similar hell and I'm free now and I'm healed. And the reason I'm healed is because I've done the inner work. And the inner work is through powerful energy healing, which helped me immensely. Um, the uh, narcissists will use all kinds of tricks and tactics to keep you down, to keep you in the relationship because you are their narcissistic supply and they will never change, unfortunately. So it is you that has to change, leave the situation and, uh, and heal yourself. And you can. I know that uh, these uh, tactics that, that uh, narcissists use, the uh, brainwashing, is seen now in our uh, world with our political leaders and all those who are trying to uh, talk to us on the mainstream media. There's very many similarities between those narcissists in those power positions and the one that you're possibly living with. So you take care. I'll see you in the next video.